can't start drilling a water well without understanding the drill rig itself. In your field work, you will encounter various types of drill rigs. Today, we're going to focus on the mud rotary rig. I want to introduce to you Buddy Sebastian. He's a registered water well drilling contractor within the state of Michigan. Hello. Why don't we walk over to the rig and we'll start identifying the different parts of the mud rotary rig. Perfect. Let's go. So, buddy, what is the first part of the rig you want to talk about today? Well, since we're talking about mud rotary, let's start with a mud pump, which is right here. This is a centrifugal mud pump. It's a three by four centrifugal, which pumps the mud from the tub, which we'll look at later, up in through the piping, up to the top head and through the fluid swivel and down back in. So when you're drilling, the mud is circulating all the time and it's taking the mud up so you can circulate and complete the well. Then from there, once you either set your casing in a gravel well or set your casing in a rock well, we switch over to air for either air development or air drilling, and this is the air compressor right here. Okay, so it's specific to the type of well you're drilling. That's correct. And a lot of, a lot of wells in some areas are completed completely with mud. So from that point, we have our air compressor. When you switch over to air for either air development in a gravel well or air drilling and development in a rock well, you have a water injection pump. You suck the water out of the tanker in through here. It's injected into the line going up to the fluid swivel to keep the fluid swivel cool and also help bring cuttings out of the hole or keep everything cool down inside as you're developing the gravel well. So buddy, now that you've shown us different types of pumps that are used on the rig, what's next? Well, why don't we set the rig up and we'll talk about all the different parts of the rig. That's great, let's go. This is a top head, which also has a working cable with bushings that when you're starting, it actually keeps the well centered and straight. Because if you can imagine, if this wasn't here, that rod could go either way coming down here. So this keeps it straight. This is your work table. With that, the rods go through here and we hold the rods with this and break them loose with a breakout wrench. Now there are table drive rigs that actually the drive is right here, okay? And the, the Kelly rod comes down through and drives. So those are a little bit different. And of course we have the rods, which are three and a half inch, which are common in Michigan with the four and five inch wells that we drill. So those are very common and useful. the stabilizer and the starter sub? Absolutely. Let's get out of the way and get it out. Thanks, buddy. Let's go. Okay, I think the first thing we need to explain is the stabilizer and the starter sub. Okay, the starter sub we use to get the, the well started, get it straight so we can get the stabilizer bar in. A lot of drillers will drill the whole well with a starter sub. But in our area, we use a stabilizer bar, which is hanging right here. Stabilizer means just exactly what it is. It stabilizes the hole. It keeps the cuttings out as the mud's going through and stabilizes the hole so that the hole stays open and is straight. So if you're drilling a deeper hole or you have formations that are unconsolidated, they're hard to keep open, you want to use a stabilizer bar to stabilize the hole. So if you can imagine the bits going down, making the cuttings are coming up, the stabilizer bar is keeping everything pushed out as you turn and it keeps the hole open. And as that drill goes around, it cuts the earth, oh, okay. grinds those up, those cuttings come up, and then literally we sift them to see what we're drilling. In. What we have here now is called the conductor or a lot of guys call it the thimble. This is what we put down in the ground to get the hole started before we put either of these two on. We push it in the ground so that the fluids can come up through here, drift over, come into the mud tub where they settle out in each compartment with these weirs. So you have the larger cuttings here, medium cuttings, then the finer cuttings are in the back. They come through this screen here before they enter the suction of the mud pump. So we have to shovel these out intermittently through the job process because the cuttings will build up depending on how deep the hole is. 
And before we even start all that, we mix up the mud in the mud mixer. Now, buddy, from my understanding, there's different types of bits that are used in the water well drilling process. Can you explain those to me? This is a tricone mill tooth bit. So this bit has mill teeth on the bottom. This is one of the one of the bits that we use. There's air and there's mud. An air bit will have tubes that come down through here and the mud has the center blown out here. This is a button bit. Uh, they are used for more consolidated materials. Your, your shales, your bedrocks, your limestones. They cut those very well in the harder type of stuff or even consolidated cemented gravel. Okay. okay, that's what these are good for and also the center is out of those oh, too. Oh, I see. Okay. And then this is what we call a PDC bit. Okay. A PDC bit, these are actually diamond tips. And you see the holes. This bit, bit is basically for air. However, they do make these for mud. Okay. Where you have like a bedrock where you're starting out. This likes very consolidated material. Uh, the shales that are hard, the limestones that are hard, dolomite, sandstone. They don't like material that's various and has pockets and stuff in it. They will cut it, but they don't like it, and they do not like stones. So from what I'm hearing, it's important to do your homework before you go into the field. As best you can. Okay. As best you can, yes. Now, what are some other tools that you may use before determining the site of the well? Glad you asked that. It's the sanitarian's job to identify all known sources of contamination on the drill site. However, it's the driller's job to make sure we maintain the isolation distance away from any known source of contamination. And one of the tools we use is a septic tank probe. So why don't I have the guys tear down the rig and we'll go over and talk more about the septic tank probe at a contamination site. That sounds perfect. Let's go, buddy. this is a septic tank cover which I know many sanitarians will see this in the field can you use this source of contamination and explain to me how you use a probe yes so we too will find the septic tank cover and we'll go out and we'll try to find the tank how deep it is and then we'll move out to the edge and to the closest point and then we'll use that and measure off to make sure we're using the required isolation distance take a look at the support vehicles. All right. I see we're here at the support truck, buddy. Can you explain to me why this is an important part of the water well drilling process? Yep. So as they say, it takes water to make water. So the <laughs> first thing we have is we have water tanks okay. that we carry chlorinated water in. We drill with chlorinated water, so we got our test strips to make sure, watch yourself, that we have chlorinated water. And we do. Perfect, it looks like you're at least at 10 parts per million. Second, we have our casing to go out on a job with. Third, we have our grouter. And our tremie pipe that we use to grout from the outside of the casing to place the grout at the bottom of the casing. Why don't we go in the shop and let's talk about screens. Great, let's go. Okay. Well, I see we're at the screens. Can you explain them for me? Yep, okay, so these are different diameter, different slot size screens, depending on what you're drilling in. Um, and the difference in the screens is you have to look at the, the slots. So this is a five slot, I mean five thousandths. Okay. okay, very tight, okay. And then you see the 12 slot here, the slots are a little bit less. Okay, that okay. makes sense. And threads on each end so you can put them together. Now that you've explained all
all of the equipment during the water well drilling process that you use. Is there anything else, buddy, that you might bring into the field? Yep, one of the most important things. You have to make sure you have a well permit. Well, buddy, the permit looks good. Thanks for showing us around Sebastian and Sons well drilling and explaining the equipment that's needed in the well drilling process. Let's head out in the field. Let's go.